Number 39. In 1967, New Zealander Bert Munro set the record for an Indian motorcycle on the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah with a maximum speed of 183.58 miles per hour. The one-way course was five miles long. Acceleration rates are often described by the time it takes to reach 60 miles per hour from rest. If this time was four seconds, meaning the time it took to go from rest to 60 miles per hour, and Bert accelerated at this rate until he reached his maximum speed, how long did it take Bert to complete the course? Okay, so it sounds like eventually we're looking for a time. All right, so we got a we have a motorcycle. All right, I don't know. Hopefully my drawings will get better by the end of this, but that's some type of. <laughs> It looks like he's being impaled by something, but okay. Uh, let's just pretend that that's a motorcycle of some sort. And um, he is accelerating from rest, so his initial velocity is zero. And <clears throat> says he's going to reach a maximum speed eventually um, of a final velocity here of 183.58 miles per hour okay and this track is going to be i don't know uh five meters long uh, five miles long right so the total distance here will be something like five miles okay 5.00 miles and <clears throat> okay great and he's accelerating right because he's somehow getting from a, an initial value of zero to this velocity so that we don't know directly, but they did give us enough information in the problem here um, that I'm underlining in red to solve for that acceleration. Okay, so in order to find the acceleration that this um, motorcyclist is accelerating with, we have to take, um, we, we have to calculate it by knowing that um, from rest, when, let, let me rephrase. So, the initial velocity is going to be zero in that case, right? The final velocity, it says he's going to reach 60 miles per hour. And this will be obtained in 4.00 seconds. Okay, so <clears throat> why don't we just, I'm going to convert everything into meters and seconds. All right, I think it's just easier when we deal with this. Um, so what I'm going to do first is let's convert this 60 miles per hour into meters per second. All right. so. And again, here I'm looking for the acceleration. So I'm going to do that down here. 60 miles uh, per one hour. And I would need to convert that into meters per second. All right, so let's first get rid of the mile value. And <clears throat> we know that there is approximately, for every one mile, there's approximately 1,609 uh, meters. Okay, so the miles would cancel. My answer would now be in meters per hour. Okay, instead though, now I gotta get rid of hours and I wanna get down to seconds, right? So the hours have to go on the top so that they cancel. That's a little opposite because um, I'm dealing with the unit in the denominator. But then I'm gonna put the hours in the numerator and then minutes in the denominator. So this is one hour for every 60 minutes. And then do the same thing again. Minutes in the numerator, seconds in the denominator. The minutes will cancel. And if you notice, the units that are left are gonna be mile, uh, excuse me, meters per second. Okay, so let's actually do that calculation now. So 60, so let's take 60 multiplied by 1,609 and divide that by then 3,600. So this will work out to be <clears throat> approximately, and I'll do, I don't know, three significant figures should be good. So 26.8, 26.8 meters per second. All right, great. So I'm just gonna write that over here, 26. 0.8 meters per second. Okay, so now I have enough information in order to solve for uh, the acceleration value here, right? So uh, thinking about this physics formula of the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. I know the final velocity was 26.8. The initial velocity was zero. The acceleration is what I'm trying to find, and now my time is 4.00 seconds. Right? So this simply breaks down to 26.8 is equal to 4.00a 
divide out the 4 from both sides. So now A will be 26.8 divided by 4. Oop, hold on, 26.8 divided by 4. <clears throat> Comes out to 6.7, three significant figures, meters per second squared. Okay, wonderful. So that is the acceleration. So 6.70 times 10 to the, oop, not 10, 6.70 meters per second squared. Okay. So now it says, okay, great. So we found the acceleration. So the acceleration here will be, again, it'll be six. Let me just get rid of actually that, um, that question mark. Okay, so let's write it in. So it's 6.70 meters per second squared. Okay, all right, so now um, let's read the last sentence. So it says, if this time, uh, excuse me, it, right, if this time was four seconds and Bert accelerated at this rate until he reached his maximum speed of the 183.58 miles per hour, right, how long then, okay? So now that's exactly what I'm showing here. This is the acceleration. He's eventually going from zero to some final velocity. Um, so why don't we do this? What we need to do first is now consider how long, we can consider it in terms of time, but why don't we do it in distance? Because we really have to check to make sure that he uh, reaches this uh, speed before the end of the track, okay? Now let's see if that's the case. So what I really need to do for this part in black, essentially here, I wanna find the displacement, okay? So again, initial velocity is this, final velocity is this, this is the acceleration, so how do we find displacement? We can use now this physics formula, right? We can use the formula uh, Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2Ax. So the final velocity was 183.58. The initial was zero. The acceleration was now um, 6.70. And now the displacement is what I'm looking for. But remember, we got to be careful here. The problem here is now, can I use this number? I want to see if you guys are paying attention. I can't, right? I can't because this is miles per hour. And what are the units here? Meters per second squared. Okay, so I have to do a conversion. All right, so let me just leave that as a little X for now. And what I need to do is I need to convert this value into meters per second. So let's do that on the uh, bottom again. So let's do 183.58 miles per one hour. Now I basically did this already, so the conversion is gonna be the exact same as on the left-hand side. So we got 1609 meters over one mile, then one hour over 60 minutes, then uh, one minute over 60 seconds, right? And all the units would cancel. So let's do this now. So 183.58 multiplied by 1609 and then divided by 3600. So this comes out to, <clears throat> I'm going to have, actually in this case, we're going to do uh, four significant figures. So 82.05, this would be meters per second. Okay, so this is the number that now I can plug in. Okay, so let me just erase. Let's erase this. Okay, we'll get rid of this. Goodbye. And now let's plug in our 82.05 value. So now we should be able to calculate from here, okay? So let's do 82.05 will be equal to 2 times 6.7, so 13.4 x, right? Divide out the 13.4, divide out the 13.4. So now my Displacement value is 82.05 divided by 13.4, 6. Point, uh, what do we got here? 6.12, right? 6.12, okay. 6.12, and that's meters. <clears throat> okay. So, oh. Yep, I was just, I had to backtrack one step because I'm looking at that and I'm like, wait a minute, that's that would only be a short amount, right? So what did I forget, guys? 
What did I forget? All right. So I'm sure some of you caught it. Right. Please be careful with this formula because I forgot the squared. That'll make a huge difference, okay? But if you notice, look, I make mistakes. Everybody makes, makes mistakes. We're human. There's a lot going on in the problem. But what's most important is that what's always trying to play in my mind is, is the answer reasonable. Does it kind of make sense? So when I got that number, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, six meters. Something doesn't sound right. It sounds too short, right? So I was like, did I make an error anywhere? So I'm backtracking, and I did. Right Now, that'll, that skill will help you on the test, okay? And that's the most important place to, well, I don't know if it's the most important place, but it's, a, in, it's an important skill that will help improve your grades, okay? So now let's square this value. So now it becomes 67, 6732. Okay, so that will now equal the 2 times 6.7 again, which was 13.4. 13.4x, now divide out the 13.4, divide out the 13.4. And now the displacement, it'll make a lot more sense. This is 6732 divided by 13.4. That sounds a lot better. Okay, this, so it'll obtain its top speed in 500 and... Uh, two meters. Okay, that's starting to make a lot more sense. All right. So now, great, we got our uh, meter value of when it will. So we know that this X right here that we calculated was 502 meters. Well, how does that relate to five miles? Well, again, we can just simply convert those miles into meters, and then we'll be able to tell, right? So just take that value, multiply it by miles on the bottom meter on the top, and remember that there's 1,609 meters in a mile. So just do that calculation. So five times 1,609, <clears throat> 8,045. So technically I should have three significant figures here. Um, so we'll do, so it has to work out to be 8,050, 8, no decimal. Okay, that'll be it in meters. So the, heat, the a car reaches its um, top speed of 183.58 miles per hour in um, this distance, right, 502 meters, okay? Now, we know that the track is 8,050 meters long, right? So that means now from this particular point all the way to the end of the problem, right, would just be the difference. So to find that value, it would be 8,050 minus the 502, right? And now what does that come out to? What does that work out to be? At 8,050 minus 502. So that works out to be 7,548, uh, 7, but I got to have three significant figures there. So 7,550, I have to round. So this is the amount that's left now. And now remember that when the, uh, when the motorcyclist, Mr. B Mr. Burt here, um, travels this distance, he is traveling it now at his top speed, okay? So now if I need to now figure out, so remember, the whole question is asking me, how long did it take Burt to complete the course, okay? So I need to know time, all right? Now the reason why I had to find this distance is so that I could find this distance. All right, the distance that's remaining. And now I know that for this frame of the problem, from this location to this location, there is constant velocity, okay? So I can easily now solve for the time. All right, so I'll call this part, let's call this part in red, this is part B, okay? So let's do uh, time calc for part B, all right? And then I'll go back and do part A. So <clears throat> we can use a simple formula here, right? The velocity is equal to displacement over time. So the velocity, remember I wanna use meters per second, so I'm gonna use the calculated value at the bottom. So it's gonna be 82.05. That's equal to the displacement of 7,550 meters over then my time. Okay, so just now do the math. So it's gonna be 700, excuse me, 7,550 divided by 
and it comes out to 92.0, three significant figures, 92.0 seconds. Okay, so that's how many seconds now in the uh, third, in, excuse me, in part B. All right, so in other words, to go from this point, right, to the end, it took him traveling at the constant uh, velocity of 183 miles an hour, took him 92.0 seconds. Now the only question is, right, I got to figure this out. How long did it take Bert to go from that point to here now? So we have enough information, right? We want to be thinking about this frame of the problem now, all the information that we know there, okay? So in order to find time, we can do this a couple of different ways. Um, easiest way might be to use um, a very similar formula to what we used uh, over here, okay? So remember, I know the initial velocity. I know the final velocity of that frame. I also do know the acceleration, and I want to find time. So therefore, I can use now my um, <clears throat> VF is equal to VI plus AT. Now this is the time calc for part A. So the final velocity, again, I got to do it in meters per second. So it's the 82.05 is equal to the initial velocity was zero. The acceleration they told uh, we found to be uh, 6.70, right? And then um, we're looking for T, okay? So this works out to be 82.05 is equal to 6.70 T. Divide out the 6.70, divide out the 6.70. So now T will be, uh, we got 82.05. Oh, 0.5 divided by 6.7. So again, three significant figures, so 12.2. So 12.2 seconds. Okay, great. Now remember, this is the time for part A. This is the time for part B of the problem. Now how do we find the total time? Yep, very simple, right? So in the upper right-hand corner, I'll put it, that the total time should be equal to the time from A plus the time from B. So the total time it took him would be 12.2 uh, seconds plus then 92.0 uh, seconds. Right, so the total time now, the total time will work out to be, that looks like, right, it's going to be 104.2 uh, seconds. And I always like to just double check because I'm, I'm prone to making silly errors. And that looks good to me. So that'll be the total time. So this is the answer to the problem. Now, the very, it's a very complex problem, but in physics, it's very important to consider how to frame the problem. What I mean by that is consider your initial and final frames, okay? You want to break the problem up into pieces. And then from there, when you break it up into manageable pieces, we can start putting those uh, pieces together to get the answer. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. And I would thank you very much.